Hi, welcome to The Gangsplainer. I'm Jeff The Gangsplainer and today I'm Gangsplaining Castell. So Castell is a two to four player game put out by Renegade Games. I feel like I'm doing a lot of them recently. So this actually came out in 2018. So I've been chasing it for a while. This is one of those games that I've really desperately wanted to get and get to the table. I'm so glad that I finally got it. My issue is that I've been into shops myself and bought Castelli or games with really similar names and haven't quite managed to land on Castel, which this game is. So I've got a few games that have similar names that aren't as good a game as this particular one. Uh, just because of um, either myself going to the shop and going, I'll get that, or someone else going to shop and with the name in the back of their head and not quite getting it right either. That's fine. But, Castell, I'm so glad that I finally have a copy of this game. I think this is an awesome game. The whole idea of it is the um, building of human pyramids. There's a picture on the front of the box of the building of human pyramids. And that's the game. That's what you're trying to do. You can start with three on the bottom row, then two, then one. But throughout the game, you are gradually increasing your ability to do stuff so you can change those numbers. And there are like five different things that you have the ability to upgrade and upgrade and upgrade and upgrade until you can build on different numbers of things, different sizes of levels. Um, it sounds, by the way, it sounds like this should be a three-dimensional game. It's not when you're building, it's just flat on the tiles. And I don't mind that. Like it would be kind of funky to be a three-dimensional thing, but the game actually works really well not being that at all. The concept is that you have a whole bunch of tiles which are people and they have numbers on them. Whenever you go to a city, you can take two of the numbered people and add them into the your group of people who are building this pyramid. You can train something. And what you're able to train in each city changes each turn. And there's a, there's a thing that tracks that. And so you always have these choices. But you can do any of these choices at any point of your movement. And that, this is really the key to it. There's a little table that says you can move once, you can train once, you can bring people in once, and you can do a special turn once. No special turns is move again or train one more person or to actually do a city thing. Uh, there's there's little uh, tokens over on the sides of the city saying this city wants to see a um, a building of people that has these numbers on each level and and you work towards that if you're able to do that then you can use the special action to take that token that will give you some extra points at the end of the turn that kind of thing now the first couple of turns that's fine you just go to spots and get your group in then what we have at a certain point is there become um, festivals in cities and each location has different order that they're going to come out. And there's some cards that basically get laid into the order and that tells you which city you need to get to. Underneath that tile, there's also a number or a couple of numbers that say you must build with these numbered people in your pyramid. So if you don't have any of them, or you can't build a pyramid with those numbers in there because maybe it needs 10s and you only have one 10, then you don't need to go there because you're not going to be able to compete anyway. But competing can get you some relatively large points. So the person who gets the highest and uses those numbers the most will get, uh, it's called a gold medal, but it's five points. Silver is three and bronze is one from memory. But check, check the rules on that. I'm not sure exactly on the numbers, but that's fine. Then the person who uses the most of each number of person will then get that token in as well. And that can be worth two or one point at the end of the game, depending on how many different tiles you manage to get in. Um, the first one of each number is worth two points. Every other one after that is only worth the one. So there's a lot of stuff to think about as you're playing this game. And what I find is that you actually need to have a vision for what's going to happen at the end of the game and build towards being able to do that and all the steps in between. The person who wins this game is usually, I'm not saying always, but from my experience, is usually the person who's managed to compete in the most of those events and do well in the most of those events. The problem is that if you go in this event, you might not be able to actually make it to the next event on the next turn. So you've got to kind of weigh that up 
as well. Is it worthwhile going after this one or am I better to go and get those people and take a turn to do stuff over here to be able to get to this event? There's a lot of thinking on that, on which way to go, which path to take. This game, oh, there's so much going on with it, but it's relatively simple at the same breath. There's oh, so much different stuff that can happen for you to be able to achieve what you're trying to achieve. I think that's really the key to it. Is It's just, you can do. You can do. And just keeping your head on what you're able to do is really the key to it. So look, I'm going to leave that there. Please go ahead and watch my games playing and explanation to get a feel for Castell and how it plays and all the rules. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you wish to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.